Hello there, welcome to the June 2019 applied paper. Here we're looking at the fourth mechanics question. A ramp AB of length 8 metres and mass 20 kilograms rests in equilibrium with one end A on a rough horizontal ground. The ramp rests on a smooth, solid cylindrical drum which is partly under the ground. The drum is fixed and its axis is on the same horizontal level as A. The point of contact between the ramp of the drum is C, where A to C is 5 metres as shown in figure 2. The ramp is resting in a vertical plane which is perpendicular to the axis of the drum at angle alpha to the horizontal, where tan alpha is equal to 7 over 24. The ramp is modelled as a uniform rod. Explain why the reaction from the drum on the ramp at the point C acts in a direction which is perpendicular to the ramp, so that what that means is that there's a reaction force here. Uh, well, the answer to this, just reading from the mark scheme, it says that because there's no friction on the drum and the um, beam, there's no um, kind of horizontal or, or parallel uh, force to the plane, so therefore it's just going to be perpendicular. So there's no horizontal force or no parallel force to the um, to the to the plank, so therefore it's just perpendicular. Okay, let's move on to part B now. Part B is find the magnitude of the resultant force acting on the ramp at A. So it's basically find this force here. So there's nine marks, we've got a lot to do here. So the first thing we need to do is just go back and read the question again. So we've got a ramp of length eight meters and it's five meters up until that contact point there and it's a uniform rod am i right in thinking the rod is routed as a uniform rod yep so it's going to be a uniform rod so it's 20 g four meters up the ramp so that's one meter and there's four meters we've now also got the tan theta is seven over 24 so doing a little bit of Pythagoras on that, if we've got 7 on the opposite side, 24 on the adjacent side, that puts 25 on this side, so therefore sine alpha is 7 over 25, and cos alpha, sorry, cos theta, it's all theta, isn't it, 24 over 25. Okay, so we need to find this resultant force here, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a moment about point A. So we'll start there, take a moment about point A. Now point A will have a reaction force with the ground, uh, so reaction at A, this will be reaction at C, and we'll also have some friction. Now given that the, the rod is likely to want to slip to the left, the friction force will have to act to the right. So let's take the moments about A. Now if we're taking the moments about A, neither this reaction force at A nor this friction force need to get involved in this question because they have a distance of zero away from point A. But the reaction force at C will come into effect, so it's reaction at C, and that's actually perpendicular to the rod, so it's a perpendicular kind of weight force, um, so that will be just as it is, uh, RC, times by the distance to that point, which is 5. Remember, moment is distance times perpendicular force. And then this is going to balance out with this downward force here. So that was an upward force. It will balance out with this downward force. If I make it a perpendicular force, it's going to be 20g cos theta. So it's going to be equals 20g cos theta, which is 24 over 25. Um, and that's that's 20 g cos theta, and then times that by the perpendicular distance, uh, which is 4, so times 4. Um, is that all we've got there? Yeah, I think that's all we've got. Okay, so let's now work out what RC is equal to. So therefore, RC is going to equal uh, this big calculation here divided by 5. And when you do that on the calculator, you're going to get 384 divided by 25G. So there we are. That's the value of this reaction force at C. But that's not the question. It wants you to find the resultant force acting on the ramp at A. So what that means is this RA force here and this F force here and the resultants of those forces there. 
So what else can we now do? Let's now resolve upwards and downwards, I reckon. So resolving upwards and downwards of the whole system. So everything that's going upwards must balance out with everything going downwards. So what we'll have here is we'll have the upward force here and alpha in there. And it will be going to the right as well. So that's going to be RC cos theta. So upwards is going to be RA and RC, which is 384 over 25 G times cos theta, which is 24 over 25. That's going to be complicated. Equals uh, the downward force, which is just 20 G. OK, so let's now work out what RA is going to be equal to. So RA is going to equal 20 minus, um, and then it's going to be all of this calculation here, brackets 384 divided by 25 times 24 over 25. And then that's going to be multiplied by G. Oof, that's big. So it's going to be 3284 over 625 lots of g. So we've done 20, take away this expression here to give us ra on this side here. The next thing we need to now do is work out the value for friction. So friction is going to equal f times mu r, but we're not given the value for mu here, we're just given that f is a, a force to the right. So what other forces do we have to the right? So we'll resolve horizontally now. So we have this force here, which is going to be rc sine theta and that 20 g force is just a vertical force so that we're balancing out with f so f equals rc which is 384 over 25 g multiplied by sine alpha so sine theta which is 7 over 25 uh, so that's going to be let's work that out so it's going to be fraction button 384 over 25 times fraction button 7 over 25 that gives us 2688 two, two, over 625 G right so we now have the value for friction and we now have the value for RA so therefore the resultant force of both of those two the resultant of F and RA is going to be equal to the Pythagorean calculation of 3284 over 625 G squared add 2688 eight over 625 G, uh, whoops, G needs to go inside the brackets, G squared. So let's now type all of that into one big long calculation. Bear with me while I do it. So it's going to be 3284 times 9.8 over 625. And then it's going to be add. Also, that needs to be squared as well. Add fraction button 2688 oh, sorry, times 9.8 over 625 close brackets and square it and that's going to give us 62 sorry 66.5 66.5 newtons to three significant figures and there we are that's the answer for part b uh, that's correct very good okay let's move on to part c now the ramp is still in equilibrium in the position shown in figure two but the ramp is not now modeled as being uniform given that the center of mass of the ramp is assumed to be closer to a than b um, state how this would affect the magnitude of the normal reaction between the ramp and the drum at c so hold on, let's just read that again given that the center of mass of the ramp is assumed to be closer to A than B. So what that will mean is the center of mass will move downward. So what that would mean is the reaction force at C would now be less. 
So let's just check that's right. The magnitude of the normal reaction at C will decrease. Yeah, good, because when we make this equation here, the magnitude, so the moment about C, we're going to be multiplying the 20G by something that's less than 4, which will then decrease this value of RC here. So if that decreases, then that will decrease as well. So therefore, RC will decrease. And it's only one mark, so you don't really need to state a reason why. Okay, so there we are. That's the answer for question four there, worth 11 marks in total. Let's now move on to the fifth mechanics question.